Hello again. Lightwalker here to narrate a hike that I took early summer, June 1st, actually before summer, uh, on the Tunxis Ramble Loop. It's on the Tunxis Trail and the Blue Blaze Trail. Distance of about 10 miles. Elevation just under a thousand feet. I got the idea from the 50 Hikes in Connecticut book. Uh, developed by David, Jerry, and Sue Hardy. Excellent write-ups of that hike and many, many more in the area. Also got the map from the Connecticut Forest and Parks Association uh, site, ctwoodlands.com. You can see the gray trail on the left is where we ended up. The blue trail in the center um, is where I actually started. That actually goes up 40 miles up into uh, New Heartland. East Heartland. Uh, there's also plenty of other trails in this area that are maintained by that organization that I wish to, that I'm going to uh, be hiking very soon, I hope. Uh, temperature at the start of the hike and uh, just over the Terryville line was 56 degrees. Very comfortable. Very low uh, dew point, 55, even though the humidity was rather high, 94%. You could see again the routes that I'm hiking in between. Route, uh, I believe, 70 can't read it now, 70 something on the left and 69 on the right. You can see the start point just off of each East uh, Plymouth Road, which is off East Church Road. And you can see the parking lot, plenty of parking for a half dozen cars. You can also park along the street here if that's filled. You can see I was the first one in the lot. Uh, here's a sign that's saying that you need to maintain at least 40 feet distance from the reservoir at all times violators will be prosecuted so take this seriously when you get to the reservoir uh, you see the trail starts off pretty wide uh, it's very easy uh, flat hike for the first uh, about roughly first mile uh, I just hiked this the day after a rainstorm so the trail was pretty wet I rehiked this trail yesterday actually um, on July August 6 and it was very dry um, total change of uh, environment um, he, you can see here it starts going up a little bit, <clears throat> little rocky terrain, a lot of ferns uh, starting to grow here. Uh, at this part time of year they're in full bloom, just looking beautiful. See the trail's well marked with the uh, blue blazes and the, they're white or yellow in the middle. When you get a chance to take a right, uh, keep going straight because if you take a right um, you'll end up at a, um, a street and just have to turn around and come back. I believe this is uh, not the location. This is actually a different location. Uh, but anyway, at this point, we are about eight tenths of a mile into the trail. And you can see it's just beautifully maintained. Here we are walking along the ledges as described in the Connecticut Walk book. I'm not going to describe them much more so they give you a chance to go out and uh, purchase the book or take it out from your local library. You can see that these cliffs are uh, pretty magnificent. They're no more than maybe 20, um, 20 meters tall, but they are very colorful and uh, pretty much a lovely sight for uh, geologists and rock enthusiasts combined. Okay, here th there are some more ledges here. I believe there's about a dozen of these outcrops, and they all look pretty spectacular. Here's some more of the trail uh, where it gets rather steep in some parts. Most of it's pretty flat, but you can see there's a maybe a 20, uh, 10 foot uh, rise there. You can see the uh, blazes uh, show all along blue here. Trail is well marked, freshly painted this time of year. And here's a steep part going down. This is maybe a 30 foot drop, and after that it uh, kind of levels off. You need, if you're elderly, you might need some help on that part. It's pretty uh, steep. There's a, about a four-foot drop there. It requires some uh, climbing. Here's a junction I was talking about. If you see these markings, uh, continue straight on the trail. Do not take a right here because uh, taking a right, I made the mistake, will put you near this cul-de-sac, and you'll just have to climb back up this 50-foot uh, steep hill. So um, the, the extra distance is in my readouts here on my all-trails printouts. If you... Uh, Hike it correctly, you won't see this extra distance. There you go. You see nearly a half a mile of uh, extra distance that I've hiked because of that mistake. But if you continue straight, the trail just becomes very delightful. It's almost an old wagon trail. Uh, I'm sorry, a uh, wood, wooding trail. 
or a hunting trail. And uh, this was previously farmland like most of the state. You could see reminiscent, reminiscent uh, rock walls at various points along the trail. And these could have also been old logging trails as well. Beautiful uh, pines along this part of it. Small pines starting to grow there. Yeah, one of the wet spots, so it's probably not a good idea to hike this trail the day after a uh, heavy rainstorm. Or in the in the spring when it's wet. Here's a broken down privy I saw just off the trail. It piqued my curiosity, so I walked over to it and noticed it was a, uh, a privy that was tipped over. Here's a little video I took of the ferns. Actually, it poured rain the other day, and the trail was mostly dry, so... Um, it only can get very wet like that in the spring. In the uh, midsummer or early fall, it's not never this wet. Correction. You can see here we're about four and a half miles into the road. It it opens up into a residential area. I believe this is Johnny Cake Mountain Road. You continue on this road for about a half a mile. Walk by some beautiful houses. I'm guessing they cost upward toward a million dollars each, maybe more, especially the ones with pools. Nice little uh, farm up there as well. Don't believe it's open to the public anymore. Yeah, we are 4.2 miles into the hike, uh, probably about 3.8 if you didn't make the same mistake I made. You can see this uh, beautifully kept lawns in this area along with the trees and the landscaping. Just a really, really nice neighborhood to walk through. It's another one of uh, my favorite houses along this route. And another one. And this, I think, is one of the old, uh, the only dilapidated area. Uh, it's a farm, a uh, reminiscence of a farm. I believe it's still in use, but not as much as it was in its heyday. Here's a view from the top of Johnny Cake Mountain. Just, just beautiful. The highest point in Burlington, uh, over 1,100 feet in elevation at this point, almost 1,200 feet. And there are some uh, beautiful uh, plants next to this person's driveway. More plants, I believe the same driveway. Turn up the mic volume here. Might have been too low. And the same driveway. This uh, this resident just seems to have it all going along here. Good for them. And this looks like some type of Spanish style villa. Um, I know that because I uh, spent some time in Southern California. My cousins had one that I stayed at for a while. There's a little uh, box from the Burlington Land Trust. I was hoping there would be a, a register here you could sign, but no such luck. There's some information about the trail. You can pause the video here if you'd like to read about it. Confirms that it's maintained by the CFPA volunteers. Some suggestions for being a good trail hiker. At this point we are five miles into the hike, uh, about 4.6 miles if you did not make the same mistake I did. At this point you take a left and uh, the trail clearly goes through this uh, mowed strip of this field. I rewalked the trail like I mentioned August 6 and the field was all mowed down so you couldn't really see the trail but if you just pretty much go perpendicular to the road you'll see uh, the tree has a blaze on the right you'll eventually get to the tree after about 150 yards then the trail goes into a uh, it turns into a trail again shortly thereafter with a little lake and a farmhouse coming up on the right there you go just beautiful beautiful purple flowers around here I'm not sure what they're called but if anyone knows please leave a comment below You go through this uh, forest of uh, mixed uh, mixed uh, trees here. 
and you pretty much come up to an elevated area with uh, some beautifully maintained trails. Here it's mostly flat, almost entirely flat, all the way to the uh, till you get to the reservoir. Walking through some beautiful fern areas. Favorite feature along the trail, other than water features. No real water features along this trail to speak of. Some baby uh, pines up ahead there. This point, we've you can see we've circumnavigated around that pond. That's what the trail does, and we're about to head south. We're seven miles into the trail. You're probably about 6.6 .6 miles if you did not make the same mistake I did. Yeah, late spring you're going to encounter some wet areas, especially after a rainstorm. Just, just walk around them. But 99% but of the trail was was plenty hikeable, plenty dry. And at the end of this trail, uh, about a mile or two south, you come up to this big open field. Here we're pretty close to getting onto the um, a a side a residential road here. I believe this is Blueberry Reserve Hill, something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that, but look it up on the map. It'll tell you. Yeah, you can see it says Blueberry there. I can't see what the rest of it says. And this is a one-mile walk one mile long walk along some nice residential areas at first and then mostly a gravel road for the majority of it so uh, hopefully you've got some good music to listen to or just listen to the bird bird sounds in the surrounding areas finally get to the uh, reservoir I believe number five yes it says number five here from the Bristol Water Department constructed in 1921 and this is where the warning sign up front came in handy. You actually do need to go through around that gate to continue on the trail. Just stay clear of the reservoir, which will be coming up on the left. This point we are 8.5 miles into the hike, or just over 8 if you follow the trail correctly. And you can see the spillway up on the left. I believe the reservoir was pretty full because we had a, a lot of rain this spring. And there's actually water flowing over the spillway. A little bit of water, not much. It, it was covered with water. Kind of can see the, the sheen on the uh, photograph there. And then the trail quickly breaks off straight ahead. Um, the road goes to the left, but if you continue straight, you'll be back into the woods. And you'll take that through a beautiful uh, view to the right, looking west. I'm not sure what town, but it's a nice view there. Looks like that was cleared away by loggers maybe uh, five or ten years ago. Not sure why. Here's a little ravine that you actually have to go down and cross over. This is probably the most challenging part of the whole hike. You have to drop down about 20 feet and then back up about 20 feet. There's some video showing you how steep it is. So be sure to uh, get ready to climb and uh, have somebody around to help you uh, in case you get back up in case you slip. Some beautiful... Um, Many uh, kind of flora there. I'm not sure what that's called, but it's it's pretty cool. Green plant. And then uh, you end up on this. It looks like a uh, an old trail road slash logging road. Might even been used for hunting in the fall because hunting is allowed there late fall. There's an old man-made wall. It looks like it was uh, an area to collect water from a long time ago. Maybe even dating back to the colonial period. It's only about five feet high. And this is where you uh, come out to a gravel road with uh, residences on the right and eventually on the left. And you follow this road down maybe about a quarter mile till you get out to the main road. You can see where we just came down and you take a left or actually a, a right, which looks like a left from this side of the road, and then a left onto the um, main road. And that road that we came out of is Buckridge Road. So we pretty much continue back on Church Street, and then uh, actually at this point we're off Church Street. We're on the next road. It might be Buckridge until you get back to the lot. Uh, temperature at the end of the hike was still a comfortable 73 degrees. The humidity dropped way down to 42 from 92 percent. Dew point at a really comfortable 49 percent. And you can see we've gone 10.4 miles. If you didn't make the same mistake I did, it would be about just approximately 10 miles according to the Connecticut Walkbook. Took me just under five hours. 
my elevation change was about 1,040 feet. If you didn't make the same mistake I did, it would be about 950. I, I estimated 980 feet. So here's a recap of what I did. Uh, I went 10.3 miles, elevation at 1040 feet, and um, hope you enjoyed the hike, the narration. Hope to see you next time, and Lightwalker signing out.